Hello, hello, hello. I am at the other couch now. And the light is coming from underneath this container, from through the through that container. And that illuminates me from underneath. This is quite cool, the light. So this is my marble rock. Marble rock is a protector rock. And it has these dark, very, very dark gray green stripes in it. Anthracite almost. Real gorgeous. to talk a little bit about mental states. When we first bought this house in 2010, I had I had this strange hope inside of me. Hope is a is is a yin and yang situation. I won't say that hope is only bad because I used to think that for a long time that hope is a state of denial or something. It can become a state of denial. Arjanov used to say hope is dope hope is some kind of drug for the ego but it's it's much more multifaceted than that hope can save someone's life hope can act as the light at the end of the tunnel so we can make it through this tunnel you know the ego dissolution funnel as I call it I made a painting about that called the ego dissolution funnel I talked about this in one of my older videos But that's the opposite of hope, actually. So hope is like a band-aid, something that can motivate you enough to get you through something. But once you've tasted truth and once you have seen the reality for what it is, and Artjanov, he thinks that hope is something that needs to be dissolved. And Jiddu Krishna Morty said that. reality is not equal to truth because truth is infinity truth is compassion is love and that is way beyond just this physical three-dimensionality so 
that is what people call God, but that is what truth is. But they haven't understood that what they call God, and I don't. I cannot use that word by itself as a religious person would use that word. So I always have to say, say it in a transcribed way or in in quotation marks or in a in a quotation type of way quoting other people using that word I don't use that word I I call it the blue god because the sky is blue okay and the night sky is dark blue and infinity goes on forever and that is the blue god okay. infinity an aid on the side it keeps on going and that is truth it's very difficult most people are afraid of it most people are afraid of that what they call god they think Jesus is God. No, no, no. Jesus is not a God. Jesus was an indigo soul. Very attuned to the infinite cosmos, the blue God. That's why he said he is the son of the infinite cosmos. as we all are daughters and sons of the infinite cosmos and to use that terminology you know the child of the infinite cosmos because he felt very connected he felt very attuned and very in tune with it and he was but he was not a god he was just a regular human you know was all the the problems and the emotional issues and but a psychic and an energy healer that that's what he was okay. an indigo i saw people talking about that in the chat room one guy said he wants to become an indigo. A lot of people want to become an indigo. You can't just become an indigo in this lifetime. Indigo is the state of soul development. Okay, you come into this existence with a soul that is the essence of who you are. And that soul is either new or has gone through more lifetimes or has gone through a lot of lifetimes, a lot of existences, and has been through a lot of learning and growing and making mistakes and suffering, okay, and hardships. And that's how the soul grows and learns okay. each existence is is a realm of exercising our wisdom our insights, our awareness and our attunement to the infinite cosmos. So the indigo is somewhere in the middle. The new soul is what I call the stagnator soul. The second level is student of life 
still very, very much more advanced than the stagnator. More, much more alert, willing to not make mistakes again. But still making mistakes, still learning a lot. Third level is light worker. My husband is light worker. Light workers are very eager to help and and to do things right and to make it work, but still making a lot of mistakes, still a lot of self sabotage, a lot of suffering, a lot of learning going on. Okay, so the fourth level is the indigo. That's that's what I am. Fifth level is Angel, my papa dog. He had become an angel in his lifetime before we got, before we before I miraculously found him on Google. Yes, he's, he's been through a lot. Lived in probably lived in in cages and kennel cages his whole life until his illegal breeder that's what we were told that's where where he came from until the illegal breeder decided to hand the dogs over to the foster mothers I don't know the, the exact whole story of it a lot of people omit information to protect themselves so I don't know what all of these people are doing and how they miraculously found this illegal dog breeder on the beach and all of this so don't ask don't tell that's what I thought I was just happy that I found my papa dog on Google when he was already eight years old so he has been through a lot and another school another lifetime of hardships and loneliness and also cold he had a whole like a down jacket type of hair growing, an undercoat growing. That undercoat fell all out when he came to us because he didn't need it anymore. We kept him warm. All that suffering that he has been through, I cannot even imagine. <laughs> and then I think, oh, I just wished I could have found him sooner I could have rescued him when he was a baby but I didn't know I didn't know about him so he was a real present from the infinite cosmos for me and I believe that when we wish for something very deeply and then be able to let go and that's where the hope comes in again hope is a form of clinging that's where the yin and yang comes in with hope on one side it it gets us through the tunnel it makes us believe in the end of the tunnel on the other side on the other end of the spectrum of this mental state, hope, is the clinging. You know, I wish for something and then I cling to that. I keep on searching. I Right now I'm looking for a dog. And that is what's been on my mind for the last eight months and more for the last ten months 
that's been on my mind all throughout all this entire year which was the hardest year of my entire life I'm not going to get into the details now but the grief over the papa dog was rough very rough and so I have been incessantly looking looking for another papa dog to rescue me from infinite sadness and emotional pain. We rescue each other. And I want to rescue a dog. I don't want to buy a dog from a breeder who just perpetuates this never-ending cycle of coming into existence and suffering and all of this. But I'm looking at it now also from the other angle. I'm not only looking at, at it from the antinatalist angle. So <sighs> things are not just one-sided. Everything is multifaceted, really. There are many, many viewpoints that can look at one object. You can look at this object from many different viewpoints. You see something different from every different angle and viewpoint, okay. And the same goes for situations. If the breeders of European, Eastern European bloodline basset hounds, if they did not continue their work, then this amazing shape would taper out. You know. If they didn't do it, then at some point there would not be any more of this amazing shape. Those are beings that proliferate through the help of people. Dogs would never continue on their path of evolution the way they are right now if they were trying to make it on their own in the wild. Most of them would not survive. Okay neither in cities nor in forests or in other natural environments. They would never survive on their own, own without humans. Oh, so the ones that would make it through, those are the very hardy ones, the very tough ones, probably the German Shepherds, maybe Labradors, those are the smartest dogs. They might make it. Maybe some of the really, really tough guard dogs. You know, some pities are very tough. So, and then they would also inter intermix. Of course, they don't. They don't go like we are continuing on the path of the pity. No, they would never say that. They'll go. I like the German Shepherd girl. That's what they will say. And the German Shepherd girl will say, I like that pity boy. 
So, and that how it, that's how it goes. And then they will meet the wolves somewhere in Yellowstone and they will mix, intermix with them. They think they are very, very hot and interesting looking and smart and impressive. And so, yeah, that's... And then eventually uh, they will look like a mix of all of them, like a... A wolf type of dog will come out of this. The basset hounds will, are p most likely not going to make it through. So, just as dwarves in general in evolution were genetically in the margins because they would not survive. No dwarf of any species. It was the human, it was actually French monks who perpetuated the bloodhound dwarf, which is the European basset hound. Those were the original. And the European basset hound was just, just kept on, you know, kept in in a very very pure pedigree line and and they made sure that people weren't intermixing them with beagles or with with other dog breeds they kept them very strict and and so that's how the european basset hound evolved okay some of them were brought to the united states and people because they didn't have very many many people cheated and and br mixed other dog breeds and in, in particular beagle dogs and so that's why the american bloodlines don't have this very distinct dwarf look not like the one from Europe, particularly the Eastern European bloodlines. They they have very, 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 very thick legs, which is very unusual for dogs in general. So very, very condensed bone mass and very thick condensed bones, very thick body structure and thick mass of body tissue and muscle and very muscular also very 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 strong and extra large dogs just very short 14 inches tall but very very large dogs <laughs> short and large my dad was like uh, so he is like really, really large. Uh, I didn't know he was. Uh, are they that large? When he came closer to the to the camera, large. I didn't know you had, he was that large. I said, yeah, those are extra large dogs. They can weigh up to a hundred pounds or even more. So I think the papa was like. I don't know, maybe 90 or something. Papa was big, big and fat and also overweight. So, with thick legs and loose skin and freckles and just gorgeous. And for us humans, it triggers that mothering instinct in us and in me it just goes it's just off the charts you know what it does to me to my brain and my body when I see that shape of dog so when I lost my papa dog that was that was worse than losing my teenage son
I never had one, but I never had kids. I don't want kids. But that's not what I imagine, you know. You have this being. I mean, in his case, I... I got him when he was eight, so I had him for almost three years. So that's like equal to losing your three-year-old child, daughter, or son. And much worse for me in my case because I prefer dogs. Dogs are gods. Dogs are the children of the infinite cosmos. They have infinite love in them and loyalty. The love is so pure and so infinite and so innocent. And that shape, you know, that's a perpetual baby, that shape, and better than a human baby, much better. This big, 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 huge, long torso, big, fat, long torso with short, really, really thick legs. It's pure art. It's living art, that shape. My papa dog. He was my baby forever and ever and ever. And he saved me through the grief over Kenny, an albino Great Dane. And Kenny was the embodiment of the Blue God. I have made videos with him. The Buddha had something to say. Made many videos with Kenny. So Kenny and Dave, those are my those are my nuclear family members. Those are my my main family. More than more than my biological family. Those are my soul family members. The blue god and the papa. So we had other lifetimes together in the past as humans. <laughs> Hope is When I hope for something, when I wish for something, when I think this is possible to get, and then when I and then I cling to it. I cling to it like I hold on to a rope that will pull me out of an abyss. You know, when when you're desperate or thirsty as in the case with men from India are with big fat white German women I'm not making fun of you I, I fully understand this is biology but that clinging and that thirstiness which I have right now for my future papa dog This is a clinging, okay? So that's that's when this hope becomes an obstacle in our lives. So I have this hope for this. I can almost get it, but not quite yet. It is there, I want to reach for it, I want to grab it, but I can't grab it. There is an obstacle in the path, okay? Whatever it is. 
a geographical distance, maybe uh, in the case of the big fat white German woman like myself, we have our own reasons for existence. We're not sitting here waiting to be picked up by some Muslim man who decides to put us into a cage or something. So right there, we're smart. We're not going to go for something like this, although there there were women. There were teenage girls. Teenage girls are very, very highly susceptible to this type of grooming that they're doing. Many of them have died because of this. This is extremely tragic. I cried over that. <laughs> Horrible. Yeah, but the, the middle-aged, white, big, fat, German or white or Western women, they're not going to go for something that cruel. They see through this. They say, no, I'm no, I'm not going to be in addition to your harem or put a shadow on me or cover my face. I can show my face just like you all show your faces. <laughs> and then they say, yes, but you lead us on. No. Okay. That's just biology. We are biology too. Okay. So, a lot of them, they call me masculine because I'm outspoken. Just because I'm outspoken doesn't mean I'm masculine. You can be very outspoken and very feminine, as I am. But they're not used to this, so they think they equated feminine with a woman who puts duct tape over her mouth and who agrees with everything that the man says. That's what they're used to. So. It's very tragic, all of this. Hope is clinging. I cling to an outcome of something. I cling to getting a European basset out. In the meantime, I've done other things. I've continued with my artwork. I have written things, I had conversations, we have been on the road trip, many different things where I did get my mind off this clinging for a while. But then I went right back to the searching and searching and searching and searching. I believe that when we let go of that clinging, really let go, and that's a tricky thing because we think we let go, I'm doing something else, but in the back of my head, I'm still thinking about the European ambassador you know, incessantly. That's like a gambler a little bit, you know, like someone who goes to Las Vegas gambling and then they quit for a day and they think, oh, I got my mind off. Now I can go back tomorrow and win because now I let go and now the the infinite cosmos will let me win the jackpot or something. No, the person has never quit that, holding on to that rope of hope. So that has never been let go of. So then it's 
stays in this suspended state, you know, in this clinging state. And, uh, and a clinging state is a state of resistance. You are in a state of resistance, and when you're in a state of resistance, mentally and psychologically, then you stand in your own way of getting that what you're wishing for. And I've experienced that many times. I know exactly how this functions. I've seen this, I've felt it firsthand. I know what what's happening. I have also received that what I wished for. And that always happened when I was able to dissolve the clinging completely. I had to completely let go of it. And what that means is I have to accept that that the possibility is very, very high that I will never get that what I'm wishing for. And once I completely accept that, then I have let go of that clinging. Then I no longer stand in my own way of getting that. See, that's a tricky thing because our egos, our minds, our, our need outsmarts us saying, yeah, you've let go, yes, you have, but in the back of your head, you have not let go of it. Letting go means it can it can get to a point where you have to cry rivers and saying goodbye to that idea altogether. I mean, that's, that's a, that's a, very harsh state to be in but for a lot of people that's what's necessary because other, otherwise they're not going to let go they have to face a brick wall first to finally recognize oh I've been running against that brick wall I am walling myself bloody with that what I want but I, I can't get it so I have to acknowledge, okay, I can't get that. And that can mean I sit there in meditation. That's what meditation is all about. It's not about some, some fancy yoga mat, yoga room with with some bells or with what all the all that stuff that's all good but that that's that then then it becomes an idea meditation is right here on the couch right there where you are allow that disillusionment to happen and that's the ego disillusion funnel that means i am letting go of that ego, of that clinging, of that resistance, of that hope. Okay. I let go of it. Let go of the dope. Literally and mentally. Meditation means you're not dr drugging yourself with anything. You sit there on the couch with that rawness of existence. That's that what I feel right now. This I might feel emptiness. I might feel this a scary emptiness. Scary, you know. What if you quit that alcohol or that drug or that gambling or that hope or that lust object or that clinging to that, getting that lust object, or whatever. Or that partner, or whatever. For, for a lot of men, it's just a, a woman is reduced to a masturbation instrument. I'm sorry to say it, but I've seen it all, and I've seen it in masses, okay, particularly on Facebook. So... I, I've seen that with sadness. I guess these people, they don't know anything else. That's all they know. 
And then they are also told by their peer groups, they're told that the Western women are just just lust objects. Like like they don't they're not even respectable or whatever. So that's what they all all tell each other. They ride each other into a rage. They create an enemy picture. Okay. Also men in general who have created an enemy image out of women. So I see that with sadness, all of that. I talk about that a lot in my videos. Because they're clinging they're clinging to that outcome of getting this or that girlfriend or this particularly this type of woman or whatever that they want so bad and then they stand in their own ways of finding her you know they'll say everything wrong on the first date they talk about another woman on the first date they talk talk about their sex experiences with that woman they want talk about the that sex experiences with another woman, it's like, how do you think that will make your date feel like? You know? It will make her feel unwanted. It will make her feel compared. Now she's being compared to someone else. Uh, that doesn't feel so good, you know, that always causes some anxiety and some insecurities. The man only is in his ego and in his clinging. He wants her, he wants to impress her, he wants to say, hey, this is so many hot experiences he's had, he's a hot dude, okay, that's what he wants to convey. But he achieves the opposite of that, What's he, what he wants to try to do. <laughs> because he doesn't feel or see the woman's psychology in this. A woman to feel loved has to feel like she is the only the only starlet on that man's mind, on his radar. Okay. That's how she feels loved and wanted. Okay. That's how I feel loved and wanted. Not by someone saying to me that his ex-girlfriend had long fingernails and why do I have such short fingernails? What am I trying to achieve with that? I look like a homely dork. Um, dude, you know, now you can go home <laughs> and I go home alone, okay? so. Because my dildo isn't gonna insult my short fingernails. And a partnership with another living being, whether that's a sexual partnership, romantic, friendship, child, mother, child as in dog or human child those are living being interactions the moment I interact with a living being there's a whole new spectrum that comes into it okay. your animal is not there to be exploited your child is not there to be exploited. Your partner is not there to be used or exploited in some way. Okay, so the other is not there to cater to your ego. All of these relationship problems, entire pr 
problem of exploitation that's going on with corporations and this planet with all the the different inhabitants, the different species. It's all because the ego clings to whatever, money, you know, this and th this or that outcome, you know, and they completely forget about that other living being. The moment we're dealing with another living being, okay, that's when we have to, we have to tune in to that other living being. We can't see that other living being as an object. You cannot see any living being as an object. You cannot even see a seemingly inanimate living being as an object, like the trees or plants or sea cucumber. They are, they are intermediate between plants and animals. Plants and and somewhat animate. So many different species, so many different life forms. So none of those are there for us to exploit. They all live there, and most of those forms lived here long, 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 billions of years before the human ape has developed into what it is now. So, And the whales are much more evolved than we are. Most people don't know that. Okay, that's why I keep mentioning this, because most people do not understand it. Most scientists are not willing to acknowledge it because it hurts their egos. That there is a species, there are species on this planet, however not on land, they are in the ocean, that are more evolved, more sentient and more intelligent and more compassionate particularly than the human apis. The human apis, the so-called apex, predator only only because they have they are using the technology invented by a very 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 minute few people and with that te technology such as weapons and cars and stuff like this they do a lot of damage, and then they think they are on on the top of the food chain. You take these tools out of their toddler hands, and they are they will no longer be the apex predator. You put a man or a woman into a forest without a weapon, without a phone to call for help. Just with a, with a big jacket and a sleeping bag. Maybe some food for a week or something. They're not gonna last very long. A bear is much stronger than a human. And they have equal right to exist. All of these things that most people do not put their minds on it. All, the, all of these situations that people don't get into it, don't put their minds into it. It's time to put our minds into this and realize that the bear has an equal right to live. He has an equal right to 
roam through the forest and eat what he can find and the whales too and they need to be free very very important you want to be free you don't want to be in prison don't Im imprison other living beings ever ever so in a meditation like this you sit down and you let go and really letting go that means the feeling the now moment of that situation let fully letting go means I abandon that idea that I might find this amazing dream dog just by traveling on a road trip and someone saying oh you know what my mother ne uh, is whatever uh, can't take care of the dog or whatever and will you take my dog yeah that is a divine intervention from the infinite cosmos things like this can happen but the the probability is very slim was that okay and I have to just acknowledge that this is slim probability huh? so yeah it, my husband doesn't want to buy from a breeder then the probability of me getting that dog is almost minute vanishing probability right to the point of like winning the lottery and I have to acknowledge that and sit down with it and I can cry rivers over it and I say okay this is what it is And I can cry over it and let go of that hope as in clinging, as in resistance. And everyone can do that with their thing, with their what whatever situation that they are attached to, the whatever rope they're using that they're clinging to. Let go of that rope, cry it out. And then after that, rest and then get some insights and then realize the other living being is alive and sentient and has the right to his or her own life's needs. The dog has the right to be sleeping on the couch uh, instead of a kennel. An animal should never be in a kennel, should never, a dog should never be locked up in a kennel or cage or crate. This is cruel. The dog should be free in your house, should be sleeping on the couch or in your bed. That, that would be the best. But when you're in the living room, the couch, there should be one couch for the dog, one couch for you. And you can also sit together on a big couch and cuddle. And that's what a mutual happiness is all about. Okay, Do that with all living beings. Birds, never put a bird into a cage. Okay, Let your birds free. Let your animals free. At least in your house. Okay, so very important. A bird sh also shouldn't be in the house. A bird, bir all birds should be outside free. Okay, like Heidi Flies has it in Param. That's how birds should live. It's dangerous, but, but that's better than being locked up in this antsiness and in this caged up life that just causes anxiety. 
causes terrible emotional problems. Okay. They pluck their feathers out. Out of out of depression. Why why are they depressed? They don't need Prozac. They need to be freed. They need to be in a forest. That's what they love. They love to be flying from tree to tree. That's what they love doing. So let the other living being do what he or she wants to do. Okay. All animal and all animals or humans. Let them do what they innately are predetermined genetically to do the way they want to live their lives. Yeah. If you have an artist child, you can't make that artist child into a lawyer or bookkeeper. Okay. Just to use one example. Okay, so sit down in meditation, let go of the clinging, let go of the object objectification of other beings. Let go of the of the exploitation of other living beings. End the the, the factory farms end it now do your part if you work in the factory farm end the factory farm let the animals out do what's right okay free those living beings pigs are extremely intelligent okay and compassionate beings let them free onto meadows okay don't lock them up don't leave them in a in the dark slaughter chamber in fear and terror don't do that to them that's worse than the holocaust don't do that to them they have as much sentience as you have okay you don't want to experience that then don't do it to them okay so sit down in meditation and let go of all of this you know, greed and the clinging and to the outcome and all of this. The the hoping, the, the rope of I want to get this and how do I get this and how do I get this and then clinging to it and not understanding and seeing anything in the process. You have to let go to see. Okay? Then you see it. Then you see it for the first time for what it is. Then you have a totally different vantage point of interaction, of communication with that other living being. Okay? So, you guys take care. Bye-bye.